Hello, my name is Sarah Cromerton and I'm a writer about dance and the arts in general. And I'm really, really thrilled to be here today to interview Stina Quadjua, who is an associate choreographer, the associate choreographer, and a first artist with English National Ballet. And we're going to talk about all things um, life and lockdown, Stina. Um, I wonder how lockdown has been for you. Yeah, I mean, God, we're on our third lockdown now, aren't we? So when it initially started, we had just, well, we were 10 days away from Creature, actually. So we were so intense into that process. And we'd done a good two months. It was this huge build up that suddenly kind of crashed um and I ended up ma managing to just get home in time back to Belgium where my family are from so I managed to get back there and kind of you know take it slow and just kind of unwind and you know we kind of well we kind of knew this was gonna last longer than you know two three weeks I think we were soon realizing it was a few months and I had time to I, th I think a lot of people we had time to reflect and I, I had time to reflect on my career you know um on what I'd just done with the company the piece nor I created um and I was in a way I, I think I was quite exhausted from um you know EMP is a is a hard working company and I've been in the company for 15 16 years and it's been non-stop yeah. and then on top of that that kind of choreography which is starting and kicking off and you know, it was just a non-stop process. And even in the holidays, I was choreographing. And so I never really stopped. And and actually, it was quite good for me personally to have just a moment to just slow down, think. And almost, because um, I almost ran, I think as a creator, sometimes you, you kind of have a bit of a burnout and you almost, sometimes it helps being bored to then, you know, get those like creative ideas going and then it was quite good for me to have this time out and to um just get excited again about projects and yeah I, it was good for me how quickly did you start to get back into class and so on or did you actually let your body have a rest as well as as your mind um initially yes I mean we were all quite broken from creature you know it was such an intense period so there was this moment of you know I did a lot more yoga classes and, you know, it took things gently. But I think after two weeks, I realized that for my own mental well-being, I preferred doing, you know, a bar, doing some Pilates. I also got into um, spin classes like my parents had a bike. So I managed to do get onto Peloton and, you know, train and stuff. But it just it was just good, a good feel good factor. I think as, as a dancer, you kind of start itching quite soon to just get moving but in a good way in a healthy way and I think it was it was nice to just keep a, a good baseline of fitness um so did you start doing the class in your kitchen like you know everybody else did after yeah Tamara's bar was you know <laughs> <Tamara's> bar. <laughs> so yeah no it was it was nice it was nice to have a little bit of a routine I think we all learned that you can't just you know nothing you know you kind of it helps to have a good routine and I think that kind of helped me physically and mentally yeah. And did you feel constricted? I mean, did you feel that that sense, you know, because dancers, you imagine moving? I mean, did you feel that or actually perhaps being in the countryside, you didn't perhaps that had a. I mean, in terms of physically, I kind of like going back to basics. And it's a, there's a really interesting thing that I realized that I really work for myself. You know, I wasn't no one was watching, you know, no one was checking. Are you doing bar today? You know, no one's ticking anything. You know, I, I realized I really work for myself. And I kind of thought I've been in a company for 16 years. I, I, you know, I don't feel like I have to prove myself anymore. But it was interesting that there's still that element as a dancer. Always you're like, I should be doing this and I should be, you know, you've always got that there. And it was interesting to not have that at all and just really do it for myself so that was actually really interesting and I wanted to do it myself so it was yeah so that was that was interesting yeah interesting kind of revitalization yeah yeah and quite quickly you came well not quite quickly but you did start to work because you did take more blues um so how did that come about well I think Tamara contacted me I think it was June can't remember now um but I I started to kind of listen to music and there was things that I was enjoying listening to and you know not not I, I didn't know I was going to get an opportunity I mean a lot of us were thinking well 
when will I get another opportunity? You know, everything was on hold and everything was, you know, you realize that all the seasons, you know, with rep were getting shifted back. So it was kind of a little bit kind of scary knowing, you know, where's my career going to go? Um, so I was super grateful when she asked me and she said, you know, can you do a short, you know, it's going to be for film short piece. And I was like, absolutely. I was so excited, you know. So um, and then it was kind of deciding what I was going to do with that. And I also um, was asked to choreograph a duet for the emerging dancer, which was happening at the same time. So it was kind of deciding on what I was going to do for those pieces and, um but that was exciting, you know, it was, and it was also nice to have time to think about it rather than be doing, you know, a whole other production while I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do. So it was nice. Yeah. I mean, I choose different things. Sometimes it's more narratives that I do, or sometimes it's music. And in this case, I was listening to the music by Nigel Kennedy, the jazz album recital. And there's just two pieces of music that I just loved. And I thought, how amazing would it be to like dance to this coming out of lockdown and I just thought I I had a feeling I was trying to imagine myself in that moment and I thought it's just going to be a celebration like we just want to have fun like we just want to explode on stage with energy and I thought this music really gave that to me and I I wanted us just to have a good time and I think after like the stress I had with Nora I thought let's have fun with this one <laughs> so that was kind of it really and um yeah, and then we had a great time creating it. We were just, yeah. So for the creation, were you working on Zoom or did you come back into the studio? Yeah, we were in a bubble. So my cast, the company was really split up. We were in very small bubbles then. Um, I think there was 12 of us. Um, so really small cast and only the people that were living together or they, uh, the people that were as a couple really could touch each other. Everybody else was you know, socially distant at all times in the studio uh, with wearing masks as well. And we never saw anybody else from the company. So, and it was really strange in a way. We did class together, we did the piece, and then that was it. And we we're all staggered at timing wise. So we never saw anyone else. It was strange. It almost felt like our own little company, you know, we were just like a small group. And it, so it was a nice experience for us. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but it must have been very odd being, you know, sort of in. Having, and did you wear masks all the time while you were rehearsing and everything? Yeah, it was. I think it, it was hard not to be able to get involved, especially during the duets, you know. Right. You just, so you couldn't touch anybody. No, you, you just want to go in and try something. So that was a lot harder. I'd kind of be tangled up thinking, well, that's your arm and that's his arm here. And, you know, but when we managed, you know, it was that was a challenge. But um I wanted to have more partnering, you know, at one point, the rules were changing all the time. And, you know, at one point it was like, well, we could have more partnering. And then at the last minute it was all scrapped. So I had quite a lot of ideas that then it was like, okay, well, okay, let's change it. You know, we just, we just went with the flow. That's, you know, I think I was grateful to get an opportunity. And so it was, it's let's change it. You know, it was, it's the same. I was given um, five men and three women. And I don't think I would have ever picked that. But actually, it made it really interesting, you know, and I had two men that could partner and one couple and one um, male and uh, female. So it was, you know, it wasn't your normal thing, really. And, and it made it more interesting, I think, you know, having that kind of restriction. Yeah. Well, that's the always the interesting thing, isn't it? I've sometimes been given a format that that mm. something's released me. I mean, I really loved the piece. And, but I and I also thought it, it represented sort of giant strides for you I, I thought it did have something that I'd never seen in your work before and that was different and I wondered if you felt that at the end of it if you felt that it had it represented something sort of new for you I have done a little bit more abstract pieces before um when they were just for choreographic workshops so for like really small events and I really enjoy going into the narrative side of things because I, they are, it is more of a challenge. Um, but for this one, I thought, you know, people had seen me do Nora and people had seen the piece Vera. And I was creating a duet, um, Hollow for Emerging Dancing, which again was very much a relationship between two people. And so I thought, well, I kind of want to show people that I can do something else, <laughs> okay. you know, and, and I kind of, it was much more fun you know I didn't have to worry about what's the meaning of this movement you know uh, it didn't matter you know it, it was all about um responding to the jazz music you know and that that was the that was 
the main thing. And it, I think it was just nice to do something different because I think it'll be different seeing it on the stage and having a response from the audience. Um, but in, it's also been very nice to develop the piece for a much longer period before you'd have the, um, the opening night in a way. Right. Um, Cause we filmed it and they ran the piece eight times without stopping right. basically for the one film. And it was amazing to see the piece develop throughout the eight times because you know it was full out it was for the the full take and they could take any shots so they were really going for it and it was really nice to see it develop and to see them own the work you know in the beginning it's still fresh so it'll be nice to see how they now take it to that stage and that next level how was it working on a film because you hadn't presumably done that before either no I mean it was an interesting development really with the film director because I don't know if you notice, but there's a lot of you hear them encourage each other. Yeah, they're um, chatting and they're walking. Yeah, around. yeah. And so the film director came and saw a run through the rehearsal, and they were doing that naturally. And we were just always—I mean, they were always encouraging. And especially when the piece was finished, and you know, if something was good, they'd like shout at each other. And and he was watching it, thinking, "This is great!" Like him because he'd never been in a studio of watching dancers close up so I think he was there going this is what I want to capture on film so I almost want the viewer to feel the same thing as I'm feeling here in the studio so, and that's how we kind of started it so then um, that was kind of really incorporated the sounds into the into the film. <laughs> made you go into dance how did you start off right at the beginning I was already fascinated I started watching ballet I was fascinated even when I was super young apparently two I was watching Swan Lake on TV at Christmas once and apparently I was fascinated I, I don't remember it but um it was already something that took my eye quite quickly and I started watching dance and started dancing myself when I was young and so I, they took me to um ballet class when I was little we were finding all these videos back in lockdown actually which is really funny um and then my parents used to take me to a lot of performances back in Brussels in Belgium you know Beja um Matzek came over with Kulberg Ballet um, um I also watched a um Sleeping Beauty by Maggie Ma uh, Marin yes. and um you know I really saw some out there stuff when I was really small it wasn't just classical ballet you know um it was really both it was contemporary and classical and I think it made me realize oh I can bring an idea to the stage you know it made me think oh well you can have any kind of mad idea and and get it out there you know and so it kind of like made me think and I would always want to come back from watching a performance and start choreographing a little solo in the style of Mansack, for example, and I incorporate the flex feet and and I would just kind of copycat their styles when I was really young. And yeah, I was just fascinated by already thinking about what I could say with dance. And I would just kind of make up ballets in my head. Like sometimes I wish I still had that imagination, you know, kind of when you're little, you've just got this like endless amount of like imagination and fantasy of dreaming up so much stuff. So yeah, no, I, I kind of had it from a really young age. And given that, I mean, and and, and particularly I tend to think of uh, Belgium and Brussels in particular as having such a strong contemporary dance tradition. Yeah. I know there is ballet, but you really, yeah. what made you then decide that it was ballet you wanted to do when come to the Royal Ballet School? What, why why did you decide to, to go that way really in rather than, Maybe more contemporary. More contemporary. Yeah, I think it was still, you know, watching class like Swan Lake. I wanted to be a swan in Act Two in that triangle. Not even the main swan. I just wanted to be a swan. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that was stronger than the contemporary. I think the contemporary side was more uh, uh, driving that choreography element in me. But dancing-wise, I wanted to be 
yeah, I want to have a tutu and a tiara. I want to do all of that. So, yeah, I kind of did take that route. Um, yeah, and I had a, I had a big passion for ballet, I guess. So I, I that's kind of where I where I went first. Yeah. So how did your parents react when you said I want to come to the Royal Ballet School? I mean, how did that? Because presumably they thought it, did they think it was a career or did they sort of think it was a hobby? I mean, um, I think my, I had amazing parents who really supported me and they saw I had a passion for something. And so they would always just encourage me and they never forced me into anything, but they were very much encouraging me if I was really, you know, fascinated about something or ask, you know, they just, you know, encourage me or take me along to the performance. Or I remember getting this like, you know, long little tutu when I was young and just little bits, you know, um, how old were you when you arrived? 11, yeah, Royal Valley School, 11. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah, crazy to think. Yeah, because I didn't speak any English back then. Um, I mean, you learn quickly, you know, you don't have a choice, so you just kind of pick it up. And, you know, and six weeks later, you kind of there with basic English. And, yeah, um, I think it was tough. I was really homesick. Um, and my parents always said, you can come home anytime. But I never... You know, I never said I want to come home. I just, you know, I was home safe. I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to stay. I'm going to do this. So yeah, kind of. So what, what kept you going? What do you think made you sort of feel that you wanted to carry I on? I think knowing that you've had, you've got an amazing opportunity. You know, you realise you, you do the auditions with, you know, thousands or a thousand girls, and you, you get a place, and you think, I'm not just going to give this up. You know, this is an amazing opportunity. Let's see what happens. You know, I didn't want to think oh, what if I stayed on, you know? So, um, so yeah, I, I kept going. And um, from the White Lodge time, we had um, opportunities to choreograph already every year. So that was always like an exciting time. Yeah. So what kind of things, can you describe some of those early works that you made when you were? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I had a piece called Butterfly's Day Out, which was about a butterfly having a day out and being caught by, you know, a boy uh, with the, one of those nets. And, you know, it was, and the music was called Butterfly's Day Out. It was um, by yo actually. Um, yeah, just little things like that. And did your dancing progress as well? I mean, you know, or how, how did the actual ballet, you know, learning ballet side of it go? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a hard time um, at, at White Lodge. I think I... It wasn't easy, um, but I got through my five years at White Lodge and then I didn't get accepted into the upper school, Royal Ballet School. I went to English National Ballet School instead, which ended up being much better for me, even though at the time it's devastating. And then right. afterwards you see that that was definitely the better journey for you, you know. So, yeah, I came to EMB school and, and then joined the company what didn't go quite right with the dancing because I always think it's interesting so that people mm. I think always think that if you've got into a company and if you're having a successful career as a dancer which you know you have that the trajectory has always been plain sailing and yet quite often it's the case you have prodigies and have people who find it very easy but quite often it's the case that people do hit sort of certain problems on the road and then go sideways and maybe end up doing something even more interesting or that suits them better so, yeah. so what what do you think if you like what suited you better about the English National Ballet School what what was different about that for you I mean, out of my year actually at White Lodge there was only three girls that were accepted into upper school out of the year because we were in an intake from Mel Park but then it was gaining stock at the time so she I think changed you know she just had a maybe a different taste to what she liked in people or in, in, a, in a classical ballet dancer. I know that um, a lot of it was physique. Um, I don't have like the perfect physique, you know, the legs, the feet. Um, and so maybe, yeah, I think, I think in the company, um, there's maybe less, but there was a time when there was a lot of people from the school, English National Ballet School. And I feel like, a lot of us maybe don't have the perfect body, but then we were maybe more expressive or we were just maybe different or more unusual movers. And so, you know, that selection process, I mean, it's, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because 
you know classical ballet the aesthetic line that's part of it you know it's it's kind of very hard and also everyone prefers something a little bit different and and so you know it, it's not like a clear clean you know if it was a direct different director it might have been you know different and and they might have chosen different people so it's kind of hard isn't it to to know um yeah. But I, I mean, if you have a real passion, like a real passion, and you work hard, you know, if you've got enough facility and, you know, physique to kind of get there, I think you can. I've seen so many people with maybe not the perfect body, but, you know, really intelligent workers, really hardworking and with a total passion to want to be on stage. And it's amazing how far they go, you know. Yeah. And would that, would that apply to you? Do you feel that it was the passion that sort of carried you forward? I Did you think ever think so. about stopping? No, no actually, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, yeah, I think it was absolute like passion and termination. And I think there was a hard moment um, in, in the school. I had a stress fracture in my back the last year. And so I was given another extra three months because I missed out on the last six months of my year, which is kind of crucial to audition. So they gave me another three months um, where I stayed at the school back in kind of the year below. And I'm so grateful they gave me that time, but I didn't have anywhere to go to. And I choreographed a solo for myself because there was a showcase for parents. Um, and there was a few choreographies that were shown and, and I choreographed solo for myself and we did it, but Matt Scoot came to watch. And it was my last kind of, I saw his performance because I had no job. Um, other girls were asked to go and work with the company. So I already thought, well, the company is out of the question. I've not even been asked to work for the Christmas season. And then that evening, yeah, he came up to me and he said, I'd like to offer you four months. So that was like January till April. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I mean, it was it was just at the last moment, really. And and I guess he's maybe saw something in me, maybe, I don't know, doing my own dancing. Maybe I yeah, could be more individual and he liked that. And I, I don't know, but I was very grateful. And yeah, it was a I still remember it like it's today, <laughs> like it was yesterday. And I mean, you've always kept dancing. I mean, you know, you you haven't ever stopped dancing. What does the dancing give you that the choreography doesn't? There's, I mean, it was a real moment when Tamara um, joined the company. We had not had that many opportunities to work with new choreographers or to be in new creations. Um, and I feel like my career was kind of a little bit of a plateau. Um, and when she joined the company, I mean, it was like, you know, fireworks everywhere. It was so exciting. You know, we had the triple bill pretty much immediately with Ross and Malifan and Akram Khan. And that was just eye opening for me. You know, I'd, I'd never worked with contemporary choreographers like that. And the, the process of their creation is very different. They always have this what they call R&D time, which is research and development. And so to be involved in that was Oh, just changed my work completely. Um, working with them, um, developing material. Um, I did some of the R&D time for Giselle as well. Um, but even for Dust, you know, working with Akram, it was just, it was just so new. And it was just, oh, it was just, you know, um, I was so open to it. I was learning so much. Um, and they're also really contrasting choreographers, you know, Russell and Akram. They're very different. And I was learning from both. And, that changed, that really started shifting my own choreography. In, in what way do you think it changed you um, and how you thought? I think that's when my real, um, I started to do more narrative and I started to really see that, I guess my movement was, uh, maybe it was a little bit more classical before, but it was going, okay, let's explore that more. We can make it, more contemporary it can still be on point but let's push the boundaries and also every movement had an intention and ever, like I created Vera after dust actually after that time because it was also based on the first world war and so yeah it just I think discovering movement more and playing with movements more much more like they do with in the contemporary kind of world allowing that kind of research time creative time um 
and patching it together really and, and seeing that kind of arc and flow and what am I trying to say with that movement so if it's a duet and it's a relationship between two people there's never just a section in between which is just a little bit of movement and then we go back to the story you know it, every movement has a development in this in their relationship so I think learning that um and learning um dynamics as well I think working with Akram you know um learning and he also always explains why he changes things so you'd go oh okay you're changing it because you know you've got more of an impact doing something fast and then having a stop that silence has much more meaning than doing everything at the same level of for example speed so you kind of learn I just by watching I learn a lot of I guess techniques maybe or I don't know what you'd like to call them but um yeah that kind of really pushed my work I think yeah do you think you could have let them just watch you or do you think actually it was experiencing it to some extent in your body that made the difference definitely and I think that's why embodying it especially also when we got to Giselle I think it's learning to be the character yourself learning my role learning my character and having all these boundaries with the choreography but then finding a huge amount of freedom within the set boundary in terms of the same movement with a different intention can mean can change the whole thing and so I really learned that I think through developing Martha and kind of pushing that really the character development which then I take into my own work then I really took that into a story that I would do and think okay this is my character what's her what's her vocabulary you know research that what what's the relationship with this person and so all of that kind of really I learned a lot through that process and I think you have to embody it I think you can't just watch it but for me I think it helped so so just you know sort of finishing off Akram if you like obviously Creature was going to be his next full length for the company um so what has it been like working on that with him because again that's gone through a lot of without revealing too much but it's gone through a lot of change hasn't it as as it's progressed and he's taken in many I mean that that is one of his qualities as a choreographer that he quite often changes his ideas as he's going along yeah I think it's also learning that you know um nothing's ever set really until the show the first night and you know knowing that you shouldn't stick to something you know you, you can really alter it and keep altering it until it's right you know you keep searching you keep finding you keep carving you know um and not worry so much uh, you know like it's endless you know you don't have to be stuck with something I think um yeah no I mean yeah creatures gone through a whole journey um so uh, we, we're very much looking forward to um getting on the stage finally <laughs> who are the other choreographers that you really find inspirational and that you oh for me I mean my other little idol is Crystal Pye of course you know I've never had an opportunity to work with her but I'm always asking everyone if I know somebody that's worked with her they get a whole kind of set of questions of how does she create and you know how does she do it um yeah I mean she's she's really um all her work really really speaks to me I always feel like she has a message with it um the the language she creates um yeah I, I think is I, I very much look up to her work and try and kind of learn as much from it really and to, to kind of put into or kind of yeah kind of use and translate into your own language you know yeah and she's very interesting um, Christopher, because also there's um she has a different way in uh, of leading a room I mean she's a, a she's very interesting to watch at work and, and I mean I, I as a witness of choreographers I'm always very interested in the different ways that they work you know from William Forsyth who I, I know you've you've seen in action to Akram to her yeah. was it I mean do you try and absorb some of that as well? Do you, uh, uh, and, and how hard was it for you to move from being in the room to leading the room when, when you started, especially when you started to make bigger work, not just padded or Yeah, um, I think Nora was hard um, because, you know, they were my colleagues. 
Um, and I kind of first I thought, well, it's not, not going to be hard. I know I know them really well. Like I know how to kind of get the best out of them or, you know, I know if they're not having a good day, I, I can read that. But it also meant that there wasn't that kind of boundary, you know, they would easily talk back and, you know, that that was sometimes hard. Um, but it wasn't, you know, it was experience I got through and, and we did it. Um, and I think it was slightly different with Take Five Blues because I had a younger cast of people as I'm kind of aging in the company now. So <laughs> it's kind of starting to be a bit more different. Um, so I had a younger cast and so that made a difference. Yeah, I mean, I think I've been lucky because I know them really well. So I know the real kind of potential in all of them because I've seen them grow as dancers. I've seen I've seen them always, at, you know, at their best at certain moments. And so you kind of really know their strengths. But for Take Five Blues, I really wanted to, like the environment for me in the studio is so important. The way, you know, we all interact with each other, the respect that we all have between each other. I think it's so vital to get the best out of the dancers and to make them feel comfortable and to make them feel like they can flourish. Um, I think it's just vital for the team, for, for whoever I'm working with. I just, it, at the end of the day, I think the piece, you know, that potential is the potential of your work. You know, it's not just the works first and I don't really care about my dancers. It's, it's, it's like one thing, you know, mm -hmm. how you treat them and how you, and your work, it just, it becomes one, you know, they are the product of it. So I think it's vital and I'm always admiring people that how, you know, certain people conduct rehearsals or how certain people can get things out of dancers. I was like, wow, you know, that was impressive. Like, how did they do that? And so I'm kind of always learning. And I think being a dancer in the studio, you can see, you know, what, what makes a dancer shut down and what makes a dancer, you know, has someone got something out of you that you didn't expect was there? You see, have you felt that? I've worked um, even just doing classes with Kerry Nichols. She she does she's not career. Oh, she's she does choreograph as well, but she does a lot of contemporary class. And even just me in an environment which I don't truly feel um, at home in. I'm more used to doing classical class. The way she gets things out of people, I've been you know so impressed with, and I'm just. Yeah, I've always been in awe of watching her at work with people and drawing out and somehow getting them to be more confident as well. And yeah, so I've learned a lot and she's mentored me a lot for my pieces, actually. So that's someone that I always kind of look up to. Vera was about Vera Britton, wasn't it? And the yeah. War again. What drew you to that? And I, she's a a real heroine I mean I love her what drew you to that story um, well I initially yeah initially for the um choreographic workshops we were given a poem and whenever I do a piece uh if it's a story or a you know if it is based on a Edward Hopper you know even the painter or based on anything I will do so much research and read books and watch films and just to kind of like really get myself in that person's head or in that era and so when I was given the poem I started you know for research I read Fear of Britain Testament of Youth which just you know I just remember crying and crying at the end it's so sad um and so I kind of used the poem but I kind of based it <laughs> so the poem kind of got dropped in the uh well, eventually when uh, when it was you know I had to talk about the piece because it was really about Vera but um and and the journey of loss and um and so I always tend to do a lot of research um and then it kind of gets bagged and then when you're in the studio it's it's kind of all in there you know and then you kind of focus on what you want to create with the piece and was it the same in Nora that you did sort of massive research <laughs> yeah I was just crazy thinking about how much I kind of yeah did did for it but it I don't know it, it helps me I think to really really get the story in your mind and to kind of feel it to analyze the characters to know what relationship they have with each other the, the kind of psychological kind of uh, thoughts behind it all and then once you go into the studio it's about kind of then creating the language for that character and not that's all in there so then it's kind of then the research becomes about the movement that 
best suits that. So I kind of feel the more knowledge I have, the kind of more, I think, confident. And I, I would know that's right. That's not right. Just because of it's all in there. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. Um, what draws you to narrative? Why, you know, because, the, I mean, I suppose, I mean, there was kind of huge tradition of narrative ballet and it's kind of gone through various stages. What makes you want to tackle narrative in the way you have? I used to see myself less as an, less as an abstract choreographer I think what I like is the challenge of saying something with the movement not just it being funky or acrobatic or I'm not as drawn to that um and that has its place and I respect that a lot but I'm interested in what I can say with it and what what you know making the audience feel something is what I'm really drawn to making them go on a journey and and for a moment they're forgetting about whatever's happening you know in their life that they kind of really get absorbed into something it's that it's more challenging maybe I don't know (laughs) yeah I like that challenge what are the narrative ballets that have inspired you I mean what do you have favorites that you think yes that you know that's I think I mean I've loved classical ballet but I've gone away from that I feel that for audiences of today, they can't always relate to that, especially young audiences. And of course you have Macmillan ballets, which are a lot more accessible, I think, than going to something like a classical Giselle. But I still feel to have a slight more pedestrian quality within it for people to respond to it more. And so I feel like going a little bit more contemporary still, to try and capture um, the younger audience of, of today into that, um, to try and get them on board faster, if you don't know I mean. So yeah, that's kind of, in terms of people that have done it, um, I think I've admired Crystal Pike's work a lot with that really, and how she can tell things through movement. And so I'm kind of trying to find the gap between you know the, the contemporary world, which I've not come from, but I admire a lot and that classical background that I'm from, but where's that kind of middle line of kind of going into that zone and I'm still exploring that, like, you know, how far can that go? And Have there been, I mean, you and I have talked before about the perceived shortage of women choreographers, which I think increasingly is being addressed. I, I mean, I feel that more and more are emerging and being um, commissioned. Do you think that, have you encountered specific problems in pursuing the choreographic side of your career are there things that you feel have held you back and which may or may not relate to to being a woman Mm. um when I first joined the company I mean I started choreographing for every workshop even when I joined I was 18 and I was already using the opportunities and you know I pretty much gave up on the idea I I I kind of my dream was to one day get an opportunity to choreograph something for a slightly bigger stage than just in a museum or, you know, in the studio as a, as a little show evening. Um, and I was always one that, you know, it's what I really wanted. And I didn't realize at the time and I didn't think of it like that. But, you know, throughout a good eight years, I, I mean, I took every opportunity. My work was developing But I was never, and there was other people that were. um, And sometimes there was, you know, um, even a male dancer that would choreograph something for the first time in a workshop and then be asked to choreograph another little thing. And he'd just done it the one time. And I was thinking, I've been doing it for eight years. Do I have to keep proving myself? And I did feel like they saw more once. I mean, maybe that's being harsh, I don't know, but me, I, th- I did feel like they've just shown some potential and they get another opportunity. I mean, I kind of gave up because other people did get more opportunities and I pretty much gave up on the whole idea when Tamara joined the company. There was another choreographic workshop and I kind of, I thought, well, I'll have to prove myself all over again because she's seen none of my work. I kind of gave up and I thought, okay, this isn't going to happen, but I'm just going to have, I'm going to enjoy the process. And that's when I created Vera and I thought I'm going to, just enjoy it and I enjoy doing this and I'm doing it as a kind of hobby and that's great and then yeah and then 
kind of things just change then you know tomorrow did give me that opportunity which I'm really 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 grateful for you know I really I kind of thought it wasn't going to happen anymore so and is it your perception that actually it is changing a bit then for women choreographers that they are beginning to be given more opportunities do you think yeah I think because of the awareness I think people started maybe questioning going oh you know are we biased you know is that there and so suddenly, you know, it's like they wanted females. So that kind of came at a good time. Um, and in a way, you know, I'm kind of glad it didn't happen earlier because, you know, my work was really developing. You know, that's when I started working with Russell Malfin and Akram Khan. And so, you know, maybe I just needed that time, you know. Timing is everything. Do you think it's partly the subjects as well? Your subjects have been, I mean, obviously Take Five Blues is... Um, you know, abstract and could, and actually has, as you say, more men in the mm. dynamics, quite interesting. But um, are you, do you think there is something about the subjects that women want to make work about that maybe appeal, I, I don't know, this is such a tentative thought, but whether it is that, that there's subjects that maybe wouldn't in the past necessarily have got commissioned maybe um are you consciously drawn to the subjects that you think i mean or representing women's experience yeah i mean i did choose you know vera britain and nora um you know two women really and the story of i mean you know one of them's obviously a, a play but i guess so i mean i i'm not aware but maybe there is that kind of um wanting to explain their journey Vera was just a story of like a loss I wanted to bring to the stage but Nora was actually uh, I watched the play and I didn't understand it you know I was like I don't understand Nora and sometimes I'm fascinated by something that I don't quite understand or I want to really kind of delve deep into to really bring that out um, and show people what, what what kind of what I think you know um, her journey is. I don't know. Maybe I mean I think there's obviously something there, but I've yeah, not not thought about it. Yeah. The other thing that has happened recently for you is that, in fact, perhaps after winning the prize, maybe this is an effect of that, uh, the prize, but you've started to do work for other people. So you've done a piece for Lauren Cuthbertson. And you've also done an opera. So I wondered how the opera, I mean, both are interesting, but how is the opera? How is choreographing? An yeah, opera? I mean, the opera was crazy, you know. Where was, was it? In Vienna itself. Um, just, I remember just arriving and the first um, rehearsal I went to was just the principals just singing through the songs before they started, director started kind of directing the whole piece. But I was just hearing them at that close singing. And it, I found it really interesting because obviously they're at the, you know, the top of their game in terms of, you know, talent and, and uh, the technique of what, how they do things. I found it interesting that the conductor was giving them the same kind of corrections as I, they would to a principal dancer. You know, the kind of thing of, if you put more of an emotion in this note, you know, especially because they're singing a story, you know, I need to, I need to feel that more in that kind of word or, you know, how you kind of sing it or, you know, syncopate something, don't make it even, but syncopate it. And they're all the same things that you would say to a dancer, you know, don't make it even like, you know, hold that out longer or um, the intention of this, you know, you can do more here. I just found it fascinating. And just being in an opera world, you know, it's just totally different worlds, like totally different. So it was, fascinating it was Mozart wasn't it Mozart yeah. Clemenza Tito yeah. yeah 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 so not a big opera in terms of movement um but I choreographed um I was one of the characters that kind of never appears but I was uh, Bernice and I choreographed the solo for myself so I performed in it for a sort of nice. section and then did some of the chorus so it was good it was a really good experience for me and to see how a director puts that kind of um yeah how they put the kind of the story together and the you know with the opera singers and, and it's just very different to how how we work and I mean I think the the interesting thing about um this time has been that I mean dance and theatre 
you know, which is the other thing I write about, has spent so many years talking about expanding new audiences and accessibility and so on. And it's very hard sometimes to shift patterns of working. Mm. This has made everybody have to shift patterns of working um, with varying success, I suppose, in terms of product, but with definite success in terms of people, of audiences, of people just thinking, oh, I'll give that a go and, and, and trying things. Do you, has it made you feel a bit kind of optimistic about, if you like, the future of ballet itself, the future of, you know, dance as a, a communicative art form? I think the, especially creating for film, I think we, we won't be able to do it all the time. You know, the budget for it is obviously, you know, it's, it does cost a lot, but I think it opens things out. Like uh, I was thinking, well, I could just, you know, if I have some time, I could create a solo or a duet and get it filmed properly. I don't necessarily have to have a show planned or an opportunity, you know, it can always be, that can be me developing myself. And then, you know, you don't know, somebody's looking for a piece for a show and they go, oh, you've choreographed that, it's ready to go, let's do it, you know. Yeah, and also it means the platform suddenly, you know, um, everyone, across the world can see what yeah, yeah. made in England you know it's not just you know you hear about this work that's been created in Australia or America but we never get to see it and so I think it kind of be interesting to see if that stays how we I get to see a lot more of other choreographers work and hear of them and see the work so I definitely think it will shift and it'll be interesting to see kind of how how we keep it up as well and how how it will change really yeah have you spent I spent a lot of lockdown watching work from around the world have you have you done that a bit as well or have you been too busy you may be more busy than I have yeah no I've seen I've seen definitely seen bits um I mean I can't think now I mean there's so much at the, the last year and, and even still this year there's lots going on um and I think, yeah, I think it's been nice seeing work from, yeah, companies that I never get to see. You know, I saw NDT were putting out a lot. I've seen, you know, um, Zurich of Junior Ballet have had things showing. I've seen things from San Francisco Ballet. Yeah, it, it's it's nice. It's nice to be able to, to see the work across. And even when I um, the company put out Nora, you know, I had friends in Australia that had never seen it and they were so excited. And it was so nice to be able to kind of have more a lot more people view it which is really nice yeah yeah no I I do I mean I feel that is one of, well it'd be interesting as you say to see what happens going yeah. forward yeah and um, and for you do you think you know your is your passion just going to keep you going you're going to keep that keep choreographing whatever we'll see what happens I really want to I never just want to churn out work and so sometimes I am trying to see where that kind of path will take me um I really want to explore what like especially when we're kind of going into more of a narrative story I feel like it takes time to develop the languages and and the vocabulary for that piece and so I'm never really keen or I find it hard when you know there's you know oh we've got an opportunity you've got three weeks to do a piece and I think, well, if I have that time, I'm just going to be recycling material. I don't have time to, you know, the fun bit for me is developing that new language, especially for that piece. So, you know, I think you might have to pick and choose, you know, as you go forward. You can't always have, you know, the, you know, months to months and months to create a new work. But I think that's really where my passion is. So I think maybe it's just you know we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah I think ideally I'd love to be able to have time to explore work more yeah <laughs> so a lot to ask for I think from people but yeah you know we'll see what happens yeah well I, I, I'm sure you will and I, I mean as I say, I do feel that you know getting better all the time it's so exciting watching your career develop so it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time, Sina. No worries. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.